Let's focus on a couple of specific voting groups here in Nevada and all the way to Cleveland and beyond for the Republicans. Let's get to our next panel. He is the senior writer for the conservative political magazine Opportunity Lives, focusing on issues as they relate to Hispanics in America, Israel Ortega. She is the veteran journalist who has seen how the machine works from the print and the electronic side of matters, who at one point in her career survived working in Orlando without having mouse ears permanently attached to the top of her head. Having lived there, I can tell her that that in itself is a major thing to, to say that you've done and lived by. Uh, she's now author and columnist at the Federalist, D.C. McAllister. I want to thank you both for being here. Israel, let me get to you first of all, because there's a lot of people saying that, again, the Hispanic vote is very important here, and Nevada is going to be a little bit of a testing ground here. I was listening to some folks today who said that they were almost surprised they said, actually, there are a lot of Hispanics who like Donald Trump, forgetting what everybody else says, because they're worried about their jobs. These are people who live here legally in this country. They're worried about people coming in here, taking their jobs, hurting their families, basically hurting the economy here. You agree with all that? Yeah, absolutely. So I've, I've been actually talking with some uh, Hispanic voters here in the state as well, and I have been hearing uh, Donald Trump supporters, and, and a lot of the reasons they're supporting Donald Trump uh, have to do with the fact that Donald Trump is, is seen as someone who uh, will will not just close the border, but will will deal with issues in, in an effective way. Something that's been missing in Washington. But uh, you know, Marco Rubio too is someone I've been hearing the name of a lot while I've been here. Uh, he has ties to the state. He's talked about his parents working in the casino industry here, uh, and so he could have a potentially good night as well. Do you get the sense? And I know that we have talked about this on the hard line now for several weeks. We talked about the Hispanic vote and whom they were going for. There's been a lot of talk about split between Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio, maybe not thrilled with either one of them. Has anything changed here over the first couple of primary slash caucuses leading now to Nevada that leads us to believe either way that the Hispanic vote might now be going for Rubio or Cruz? I think, I think tonight will be that night, uh, Ed, because I think this is a state that has about 18 percent of the Republicans here are Hispanic, and that's a big chunk compared to anything we've seen in, the, in previous primaries. So I think tonight will be the story, and then I think that could potentially set the stage for what we'll see down the road on Super Tuesday when places like Texas um, and other states, too, that are seeing a growing population start to vote. D.C., let me bring you in this, and certainly on Nevada, because the people in Nevada, they're very serious about this. They say that Nevada counts. Again, i got to be honest, a lot of the columns I've read in the last couple of days, different pundits as well, they said, look, Nevada, 34th state in the union as far as population is concerned. Okay, we get it, but this is merely just a turning point. That's all it is. It's, it's a, and not to insult the people in Nevada, these are a lot of the experts saying, it's good, it's interesting, but this is just a, a spot to get us to Super Tuesday. It, it doesn't mean as much. Do you agree with that? Only about 7% of the GOP voters caucus here. So, I mean, number-wise, I agree it's not that significant, but it's very significant as far as momentum. I mean, small things can have big impact, and this is one of them. And after what happened in South Carolina, I want to see if Trump continues to have this momentum. What's going to happen with Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio? Is, Mark, is Ted Cruz's ground game going to show up here? Because he's had people on the ground. I mean, t uh, Donald Trump is really playing on his name. He's He's been here in the state. People know him. Uh, he's probably going to win pretty big, but we're going to really see what Ted Cruz can do with that ground game, how Marco Ruby, Rubio cut into that. And also, where will the Hispanics go? Will they be like the evangelicals and suddenly break? And we expect them to go in one direction, but then they go and flock to Trump, which would be very fascinating and, and show not only indications for the primaries, but also the general if he were to win it. Let me get your take on that, because you brought up the evangelicals. I think that's fascinating here, because still there's a lot of talk about what happened in South Carolina, where the evangelicals went for Donald Trump. Now, we've had people on the hard line, and people who are very much in the evangelical community who are frightened at what's, what's happened. They're shocked at what happened. They said that basically they can't understand how many of the evangelicals went for Donald Trump, somebody that they said is not reputable. They went off on a litany of items here. But the point I brought up in that is that evangelicals are citizens as well. They're worried about jobs. They're worried about their children. They're worried about their security. They're worried about national security. So don't you think sometimes that maybe we overestimate the evangelical side and we don't bring in the human side enough with these people, D.C.? Well, exactly. And, and 
don't we, a lot of times the criticism with Christians is that you want a spiritual leader. You want to bring in some kind of theocracy. And so people don't want them voting that way. But then when they don't vote that way, we're like, well, why aren't you voting for the really Christian guy um, when they're being more pra pragmatic about it? And I think what I've been hearing from evangelicals is that they're tired, just like everyone else is, of Washington not listening to them, the borders being open, the economy being bad, and just politicians not doing what they send them to Washington to do. And they look to Donald Trump the same way other people do and just giving Washington, you know, a hard time and saying, you know, I'm going to do it differently. And they want a leader in that. And what I hear a lot from them is they're saying, I don't look to my president anymore to be the spiritual or moral leader. They're very jaded about politicians and just think that they're pretty immoral and just have no expectations of them anyway. And so they're like, well, we'll just go and look at what they're saying. And they like what Donald Trump is saying, that strength element. Israel, let's bring both of these things into play here now, the evangelicals and also the Hispanic vote as well. Ted Cruz fired his spokesman in the last couple of days, Rick Tyler. This comes down from a video, comments that Marco Rubio allegedly made about the Bible, which he didn't. It was really in poor taste. It was an out-and-out -out fabrication. So he fires Tyler. There are some people thinking that maybe he shouldn't have. Maybe he should have just let this die because they're talking now that maybe this shows that he's got a bigger problem here. And the evangelicals and the Hispanics will now look and say, well, wait a minute, maybe some people are right, Senator Cruz. Maybe you are lying. Maybe you are running a dishonest campaign. This thing seems to be a real, a real problem for Cruz that could derail the entire campaign. Minor thing, but minor things turn viewers and turn voters off. That's right. I, I mean, I think it's been a combination of, of uh, a string of events. Uh, this, this Facebook post you just uh, referenced uh, really was uh, one of a number of things that has happened with the Cruz campaign. I mean, you talked last week about um, the Photoshop incident. Uh, and, and so I think it, it, it's this perception that, that uh, Ted Cruz is not playing fair. Um, and so I, I'm not sure um, whether or not, you know, Rick Tyler had to be fired or not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure about that either way. But I think, you know, clearly... Uh, Ted Cruz needs a strong showing tonight in Nevada. Uh, he's got a, a, a couple of really key states coming up in Super Tuesday. He has to perform well uh, because otherwise, you know, it is going to start seeming like this is Donald Trump's nomination to lose. Are we looking then perhaps Israel at a point where some people are now going to start to look at Ted Cruz and say, you are not honest. Donald Trump is right. And Marco Rubio is right. Well, I mean, let's hope not, because, I mean, Ted Cruz is someone I respect a lot. I mean, he's someone who, who, who has stood up for, for conservative principles in the United States Senate. Uh, I may have my differences with him on some issues, but, you know, he, he's someone who, who really has been a good standard bearer for the conservative movement. So um, I, I think, you know, let, let's, let's see how, how these next states play out. Let's see how uh, Republican voters feel about the remaining candidates, because I think there's a good, good feel that's, uh, that's left. D.C., let's look at this now because, again, this is a lot of discussion about second place here. Everybody agrees that Donald Trump will win in Nevada. Second place. Let's stay on Ted Cruz here for just a moment. The guy who won in Iowa, then lost the next two. If he does not win, or if he does not finish second here, doesn't that tell us something? He's really got to finish second here to get back on track because it could be a disaster to him if he finishes far behind Marco Rubio here. I don't think it would be a disaster, but I think and I, he will probably finish second, third, but this is just one step. I mean, there are a lot more states coming after So it's not a big deal. Second or third, it really doesn't make a big deal at this point to yeah. Ted Cruz, you think? It's it's the next states that are really going to matter, and especially Texas. Uh, but I agree that this is these him being a liar and him being not trustworthy. It's just propaganda. We hear that a lot from Donald Trump. He's really jumped on this. I mean, just these things happen in campaigns, and they're really blowing it up. But like you said, it, you know, perception matters. But he is a very strong fighter and reliable and a good constitutional conservative and he needs it really does come down to who do you want Marco or do you want Ted as far as challenging Trump because as long as you have those two men in the race they're going to split those votes and then Donald Trump is probably going to be winning so it really does come down to who is going to rally around which candidate as far as the second place candidate and have that person be the one who challenges Trump you know is it going to be Rubio and we talk about Ted Cruz you know being a liar but what about Marco Rubio himself as far as the gang of eight and you know what what he presented to his constituency there in Florida and they don't even trust him he's not even ahead in Florida 
you know, people need to be looking at these candidates and what they stand for, not what's going on in their campaigns. I got about two minutes left, so I'm going to split this between the two of you. Israel, I come to you first. We've talked about everybody except we haven't mentioned John Kasich and Ben Carson. The GOP wants John Kasich out. They said it's time to give your votes to Marco Rubio. He won't. Ben Carson won't. Do you personally think it is time for Ben Carson and John Kasich to hang it up and go home? Well, I just see uh, the math is really tough for both of the both of the candidates. I mean, I, I, again, I respect both of those candidates. I respect John Kasich and Ben Carson. But I mean, there's a poll coming out uh, just today, I think, where uh, uh, John Kasich loses to Donald Trump in his home state. Um, and, and Kasich uh, even questioned whether or not he should continue being uh, running for presidency. So uh, I think I think there's going to be more uh, more pressure for them to, to step aside if they don't do well um, in, in this state and beyond. D.C., same question to you. I agree. I mean, Ted Cruz really needs uh, Ben Carson to go out. I almost feel like Ben Carson is staying in just to spite him in a way. That may not be fair, but it almost seems that way. And Kasich, yeah, I, he just doesn't have the numbers. It really does come down to that. I wonder why they're staying in. But there's a lot of pride and a lot of effort that goes into these campaigns. So you can see why they're staying in. Do you think that there's any chance whatsoever that John Kasich can pull off some kind of an upset as he heads towards Ohio, D.C.? No. No. You think he'll take a VP spot from Marco Rubio, as some people have suggested? He doesn't have a ground game even in Nevada, so I don't see him moving forward. Do you think he'd take a VP spot from Marco Rubio, as some people are speculating? I, I, no. <laughs> no, I, no, that's just, that's the short answer here. Israel, same thing to well, you? No, I mean, uh, Rubio doesn't want, he doesn't need an, an, another moderate. He would need a, 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 a conservative, someone who, who is seen a, to the right of Marco Rubio. So no, a John Kasich ticket doesn't help him. All right, listen, I want to bid farewell to Israel Ortega. Israel, always a pleasure to have you on the show. I want to exactly. thank you so much. Appreciate we will talk to you again real soon, get your expertise. And D.C. McAllister will be back after the break. A note here, they are still counting the votes in the caucuses here. We're hearing from a lot of people that it is chaos in the various caucuses in Nevada right now. We've had talk about people wearing Trump gear when they're actually taking in the ballots. It's going to be a fun night as we watch what happens. Stay with us. We are here with our special coverage of the 2016 Nevada Caucus on Newsmax and Newsmax.com.